I don't know about you, but every time I hit the water, especially a new body of water, my goal is to find fish quickly. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, make sure before the video gets started, you hit that subscribe button and punch the notification bell. Brand new videos come out three times per week, 52 weeks a year. And also be sure to check out our blog site, thebassfishinglife.com. Thank you so very much. Well, as humans and as anglers, we are impatient people. We like to get on fish quickly and catch fish for as soon as we launch the boat and then all day long. That's just what we hope for. Doesn't always happen. Well, I like to find fish in high percentage areas quickly when I go to a brand new lake or river. And today we're going to be talking about funnels. Now, if you've ever spent much time as a hunter, deer hunter, turkey hunter, whatever, you know that funnels are something that hunters look for all the time. Places where it pinches down travel routes into very predictable areas. Well, the same exact thing can be transferred over to the water and we can look at our lakes and rivers with that same eye. Where can we find areas that pinch down travel routes, migration routes, so it places the bass in extremely predictable locations. Now there are two types of funnels that I'm going to talk about today. The first one is the one that most of us are familiar with and those are what I call hard funnels or structure funnels. The second kind is soft funnels or funnels that are created by cover. So real quickly we need to break down what is the difference between structure and cover. Structure is your hard contours, part of the earth I guess you could say, lake beds, river beds. Cover is anything that is on that structure. That would be vegetation, brush piles, a boulder, a lay down tree, a boat dock, that type of stuff. So we have structure and cover. Hard funnels are created by structure, soft funnels are created by cover. Well, whenever I go to a new body of water, of course, I always pull out my lake maps on my, you know, graph and look through it that way. But I really find that Google Earth is an outstanding resource because it allows us to see the big picture and the detail that is available on that satellite imagery is pretty crazy. And they're updating those images all the time. So I always look at my maps, my Lake Master topo maps, and then I always look at Google Earth as well. And I use those two sources to find funnels on any new body of water that I go to. Let's take a look at some funnels that I found on some recent fishing trips. So here's the first one. Now this is one of those obvious places that you're thinking, holy cow, how could anybody not find this particular funnel? On this lake, it was flowing into this river. And so there was just a ton of current right here and it's just a natural neck down area. This is a super obvious place. And you can tell by the Google Earth image that we have some deeper water. It gets real shallow up into a sandy flat and then gets deeper. And you would think that there would just been anglers parked on this spot like crazy. Well, I fished this particular funnel my son and I did for two days. Never another angler, not one, not one other angler came to this particular funnel. We had this spot all to ourselves for two days and that was on a weekend. Could have been the boat traffic, it was a summer weekend and there was lots of pleasure boaters coming through here. But we just moved over to the side and we caught a ton of smallmouth. As you can see in some of the images here, it was smallmouth like this non-stop the whole time that we were here. Now the important thing to know about this particular funnel that we were fishing, this hard funnel, this structure oriented funnel, is you have to understand how the current is coming through it. This one was really easy. The lake was draining into this river so we just pointed the bow of the boat 
up into the current like you should, cast up into it and let our baits present naturally coming back to us. And we exclusively were using drop shot rigs in this particular setup to keep the baits up off of that little bit of vegetation that was on this sandy bottom. So how is the current coming through here? But it doesn't always have to be what we call natural current. It could be current created by wind and current created by boat wake. So always use that current to your advantage. The fish are gonna be facing into that current and looking for prey to come to them. So once you find the funnel, which side of it do you have to position yourself? Here's another funnel, and this particular one also is a hard funnel, a structure type of a funnel. And this is an interesting situation because sometimes the wind is blowing from this direction, but the boat wakes are moving from this direction. There's no natural flow on this particular funnel. So it depends on what is going on on the lake that particular day. If there's heavy, heavy boat traffic and the boat wakes are pushing this way, I will position myself here and throw this direction. If it's just wind pushing through, then I'll go ahead and flip it around the other direction. But you can see this is also a very obvious structure type of a funnel. Now let's take a look at this third image. This is what we call a combination between a hard funnel and a soft funnel. So this here is a massive rocky flat. You can take a look at some of the houses in this Google Earth image and you can see how big this particular flat is. And here's the natural neck down area. But still, that is a huge amount of water to cover. So that's still a very, very big funnel. So once we located that hard funnel, we decided we need to find a soft funnel or locate some cover that was funneling fish on top of it. And it's not real easy or apparent to see on this Google Earth image, but there was a very defined weed line right off of this big rocky flat, right where that water dropped off and was deeper. There was just a really, really nice weed line and the fish were sitting on that inside edge. So they were between the rocky flat and that inside edge of the vegetation line, it had naturally funneled them down. So we actually used two types of funnels in this particular situation to put us in a very high percentage area. Now, whenever I find what I think is between my topographical map and my Google Earth image, what I think is gonna be a high percentage area, there is a very specific way that I approach it. The first thing that I do, and of course you take into consideration conditions, gray days, windy days, all that type of stuff, but whenever I first approach these high percentage areas, I try to use a little bit quicker bait, more of a horizontal presentation. So I'm gonna be throwing my swim jigs, uh, maybe I'm gonna be using some crank baits, spinner baits, that type of stuff. I want to dissect this area as quickly as possible. And even if I don't catch a fish, can I get a bass to reveal themselves? Will I see a largemouth coming up out of some weeds? Will I see a smallmouth coming out of a rocky area? Can I get the fish to reveal themselves? So that's why I'm going to use more of a horizontal presentation, something that is a little bit quicker. And then once I feel I've narrowed that spot within a spot, I talk about that a lot in my videos, once I find that spot within a spot, then I might change it up to something a little bit slower, especially if the conditions on that particular day demand that a high bluebird, sunny type of a day. I may throw the Ned rigs, jigs, you know, soft plastics down on the bottom, even a Carolina rig. So depending what I locate in my first search mode with my horizontal presentations, then I will adjust and use more of a bottom bouncing presentation or something targeting a very specific spot within that spot. One critical factor to keep in mind when you're looking for funnels is always try to find one that has deeper water access. Now notice I didn't say deep, okay? So it depends on the body of water that you're fishing. So look for one that has deeper water access. So if part of this funnel right here where it sits in the saddle is five feet deep, is there water that's 
you know, seven, eight, nine, ten feet deep next to it. Anytime that you can find deeper water access on either side of a funnel, you have really, really upped the odds of putting yourself in an excellent place. And even if you're not getting bit right away, you can almost guarantee that there are bass there. You can be confident in your approach that you are in a very high percentage place. Well, I hope that this quick breakdown of how I approach new water looking for both hard and soft funnels helps you out and you can apply it to the lakes and rivers that you fish. And hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.